Hi people, my name is Vexter and I do models for 3D printing. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I model stuff inside ZBrush and uh, I'm going to use XP Pen Artist Pro 15.6 for that. Um, I got the device a month ago and so far I can just say that I'm really like loving it. So um, this is going to be a two part tutorial. Uh, we're going to do something from Sphere. I will quickly add some details just to show you how everything works and uh, in the second part we're gonna add fur, uh, hair, stuff like that. So stick around. Today I'm gonna try to make uh, orangutan and first thing that I usually do, I, I usually start modeling from a sphere but this time I'm gonna make it slightly different. I'm gonna use few different sub tools to, to create a face. Uh, so right now I'm just gonna quickly do the, the basic shape. Uh, I'm gonna make this top part a little bit smaller. And yeah, this looks great. So I'm gonna add another sub tool, another sphere. And I'm gonna use this part for the mouth and for the nose area. Like I said, I could have done this as one sub tool, but Sometimes I like to experiment. I like to look at um, faces uh, through through bunch of simplified shapes. And when I was looking at references of orangutan, I've noticed that I can I can do it with two spheres and basically one cylinder, and that that's gonna be a good start. So I'm going right now with that. Like I said, it's it's how you like to, to do stuff. I could have just applied a bunch of clay on top of one sub tool and smooth that out, but this is a nice experiment. So now I'm choosing the third sub tool, which is this cylinder. And after I position it, I'm gonna quickly adjust the shape. So I'm gonna use the move tool to do that. Some people like to use snake hook because uh, they just like the style more. And now I'm gonna smooth the cylinder. I'm gonna hit this Sculptress button. And uh, that's a really neat feature in ZBrush. And now you, you also have it inside uh, ZBrush Core. And it, it's a great thing. It, it's just applying more, more polygons to the part that you're smoothing out instead of just arranging uh, actual polygons that you already have. And now I'm going to go into geometry and I'm going to hit this Dynamesh. So I need to hold shift and make square and then I can smooth everything out. So th this looks like, like a decent start. Now I'm going to carve nostrils. I'm just looking at reference images in, in the other monitor. Somewhere like that, yeah. And I'm gonna also make the mouth. Somewhere here, yeah. That's fine. Great thing about ZBrush is that you can really adjust everything how many times you want until it just feels right. Right now I'm just carving uh, holes where the eyes are gonna be. And you can see that every time I do that, I, I smooth everything a little bit. Some people avoid doing that. They, they like to mess around first with less polygons and then start dividing it and applying more details. Again, I'm I'm doing everything how I feel at, at that point. Sometimes I do it more like like them. Sometimes I start adding more and more uh, polygons, more details, which uh, sometimes can really really not be a great idea because you can easily crank up the amount of polygons and your software, your computer is gonna get really slow. But like I said, you, it's something that you really need to experiment for yourself. Now I'm gonna add another sub tool. It's gonna be another sphere. And we're gonna use that 
for the eyes. So I'm going into this transparent mode to position everything. Okay, this looks kind of fine, fine. And we're going to mirror it and press X. So we have mirrored image. So uh, we have symmetry turned on. Um, why am I using it like that? Well, you, you can, you can, uh, you can make your eyes on the sub tool that you have already created, but I don't suggest that because if you try to move anything, uh, you will affect also the shape of uh, the model's eyes. And trust me, you don't want to do that. Shape needs to be perfect, rounded. And in this way, I can change one sub tool and eyes are going to stay the same and it, you, you just have a better control. Eyes are probably the, the area that I tweak the most. I'm never satisfied with that part. And now you can see that I'm just adding rough details, which we're gonna uh, adjust quickly. But um, right now I'm gonna do some changes to the nose. I'm gonna do more details on that area. And um, I I know how other people are doing that, but I like to add a little bit of detail on each part uh, just so so I can feel better. It's it's not something that everyone should do, but uh, just overall shapes on some areas, uh, you know, just they just make the, the entire difference. Like if you go back. A minute ago and just see the, the nose part it, it looks really off and uh, now by just applying a little bit more of clay I think it made a huge difference and uh, when you start doing something like that you want to to quickly feel that you are doing the right thing so now I'm gonna focus more about on, on the eyes uh, I need to start adding more details and you can see that I don't have enough polygons in that area and there's a quick fix for that. So I'm going to turn on the sculptures and I'm going to hold shift and I'm just going to smooth this area and you can see that density of polygons has increased wherever I was smoothing with sculptures turned on. So this means that I can add more details on, on that area. And uh, I'm still keeping a low amount of polygons on the rest of the model, because if you if you just do the subdivision, it's going to add more polygons on everything and uh, you can quickly have a lot of polygons. But you really don't need polygons everywhere. And later I'm going to show you how you can evenly spread out everything. So now, now eyelids look much better and I can start adding parts. And, and you can see right here that this part has more polygons and I can make smooth line and then it hits the area where it has less polygons and you basically cannot add any details. Just to quickly explain all the subdivision. So if you go here into geometry and you, you can hit divide and it, is, it will add a lot of polygons uh, on the entire model. So now you can see that there are much more polygons than uh, there were before. Also shortcut is control D. And you, you can still see that around the eyes, nostrils, where I was using uh, sculptures, I had more polygons, but now I want to adjust everything. I want my polygons to be evenly spread. So I'm hitting zero measure, which will use all the amount of polygons that I have these active points, which is 1.7 million right now. And it's going to try to evenly spread everything and delete unnecessary ones. And now you can see how everything looks much nicer. 
and evenly spread out. And the amount of polygons went below 1 million, which is great because, like I said, your software, your computer is gonna operate much faster and you will not have problems. And now I can start applying more details and you can see how lines are now gr looking great. But um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly adjust the, the intensity of my brush and uh, because these lines are really harsh and it's great for 3d printing don't get me wrong but uh, I want to to be able to make it more organic so I'm gonna just lower the intensity and do more passes on each line to, to give me a better depth and no, you you can also adjust the the strength of of each stroke you're applying directly from from your uh, graphic display. I prefer it this way. Now I'm gonna turn off the symmetry because I want to add some lines here and the the, the areas that are connecting. It's never good to do any kind of symmetry because that is gonna be visible, and when you're doing uh, faces, uh, it's really important to break the symmetry as soon as possible. For example, if you take a selfie and uh, then you cut one part of your face and mirror it, your face is immediately going to look off because uh, none of, of organic stuff in, in life is not perfectly similar, uh, symmetrical. And, uh, by just applying few changes to your model, you will see that uh, everything will just look more organic, much better than when when the symmetry is turned on. So now I'm gonna use them standard uh, just to to apply more details and uh, make make the separation between some parts, like like the nose and. Uh, I'm gonna make the, this cut in the middle. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay, this is going in the, the right direction. And um, now I'm gonna tweak the eyebrows. I want some kind of different, I'm searching for some kind of different expression. So I'm gonna lower the eyebrows. I'm gonna make this face slightly older, a little bit sad. And uh, I've masked the, the part around the eyes so I can just lower everything. Also this part needs to go a little bit out. One of the things that you need to do a lot when you're 3D modeling is uh, you need to rotate your model as much as possible. You can't just sculpt uh, from one point and because you will, you will get surprised. For example, if I just sculpt everything from from this point, it's gonna look fine until I rotate the model, and and that happened to me a lot of times. I can then see that everything looks completely different, well, especially if you're doing, for example, human faces. And one of my friend explained that in, in a really great way. He said, everything look, looked great from, from the uh, front. And then I rotated it and it looked like it hit the wall. <laughs> and it's true. So rotate your model as much as possible. Look from every single angle and uh, you, will, you will spot much faster what's wrong with your model in that way. Okay, I, I can see that I need to adjust this area. It needs to go much more down and this one needs to go a little bit more inside. Okay. <laughs> I like this face already. I think all, almost everyone will tell you uh, not to start applying bunch of different details until you're happy but I'm gonna quickly show you 
how you can apply some stuff and still get away with everything. So uh, if you click on light box and go to alphas, you can pick one of these nice uh, materials, wrinkles. And uh, I'm gonna switch from this thing to drag. And let me go a little bit more closer. And I'm gonna turn off the symmetry. And if you start dragging, you can get something like this. Only problem is that this area is now facing outside and we want everything to be inside. So either you're gonna hold Alt or you're gonna click on this button, which will subtract. So now you have texture, you have scars like this, but you can still see that there are not a lot of details in it. So we need to divide it even more to add more polygons. So click on divide or, or control D to do that. There are much more details, but uh, you really shouldn't leave it like that. Um, if you look at, at skin of uh, basically every organic thing, you will see that there are so many layers, so many different parts that you are just missing out because you're not focused on that. And uh, you, you, you can just experiment, you can add layers on top layers, uh, smaller details, bigger details, and it's gonna make everything much nicer, less perfect. So now I'm just applying a few of those and smoothing them out because that's gonna be just my base thing. Don't forget that I'm holding Alt all the time. Also another option where you can basically use this alpha and spray on your details. Uh, it works in, in a lot of cases, sometimes not, but if you click here and you click on spray, and I'm gonna increase the size of my brush and decrease the intensity. You can see that now I'm painting some sort of a texture, skin texture on top, and I'm using exactly the same alpha that I've used for the bigger areas. And yet it looks completely different. And again, I'm not applying details at this point when I'm sculpting stuff. Uh, I think this is way too early. I would rather apply more, more, I would rather carve more details and be sure that my model looks good enough before before that. Uh, but this needs to be a shorter tutorial, so we're just gonna skip a few things.